What's up everybody, Tito with the Law Android, and today I'm going to be giving you guys my review of the Samsung Galaxy Core Prime from Freedom Pop. And now this review is going to be a little bit different because I did uh, do an unboxing and I did talk about the specs with the Galaxy Prevail LTE. And basically the um, Galaxy Core Prime and the Prevail LTE are the same phone, so I'm not really going to go into like specs like memory, RAM, and all that other good stuff. Plus this phone's like a year old, so um, there are tons of videos out there that can tell you that stuff. I don't need to regurgitate that stuff. But what I want to talk briefly about is my experience with the Galaxy Core Prime on Freedom Pop, okay? So this is not a device that I, I use the bring your own device uh, method to get this on there. This, I, you know, it, it came from them. They sent me this and I got one month free of their service. And after five days, I pretty much figured I have um, enough collected uh, information to kind of pass on for those people curious about Freedom Pop. So first, let me start off by um, letting you guys know that Freedom Pop operates on the Sprint network, okay? So if you're used to Boost Mobile and Virgin Mobile, you're not going to have any problems as far as like where you're going to get service at because if you know where you get service at with those MVNOs, you'll definitely get the same service with Freedom Pop in those areas. So um, these devices are CDMA. They're not GSM. Um, so yeah, just say Sprint. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, so um, I really gotta say, you know what? Like, this is an awesome phone for what it is. Um, I use this phone line as my burner line, so anyone can call me on it. Um, I get unlimited um, talk. So, but if, if, if like my my daily driver is charging, if it's dead or anything like that, I have this as backup as well. Um, so it's always great to have some sort of backup device. And after the one month free is over, I do plan to put this on the basic 500 plan. And that plan is 500 talk minutes, 500 text minutes, and 200 megabytes of data, which is no big deal because this device is going to be mostly around, you know, my house. And basically, with that being said, is that uh, this device will always be on Wi-Fi at home. If I do venture off anywhere, I have 200 megabytes of data to use, which normally I won't even use this actually to like, say, if I want to stream video uh, to UPeak, um, I'm not going to use this to do that. So no big deal. Um, but if I need to look up like quick things like, you know, look up Google Maps for a certain area, it can do it. <clears throat> um, this device does have LTE and LTE is basically the same as Boost Mobile and Virgin Mobile. So however your experience is in your area for LTE will be the same experience you'll have with the Freedom Pop uh, network, basically. It's Sprint. There are a couple of things that I frown upon when it comes to Freedom Pop and one of them, a big one, is the phone calling on it. Like, this device was sent to me from Freedom Pop, okay? As you guys saw, I showed you guys the box, okay? And I did. I do have another device that's on Freedom Pop. It's my uh, ZTE Boost Max. And with that one, it was always relying on VOIP calling, which is one thing I don't like. I don't like voice over internet protocol because <clears throat> to me, the network is so congested that even at times, the phone call can be pretty crappy, which is, you know, totally different when you're using something like Boost Mobile and you get unlimited talk. You know, you make phone calls, it actually interrupts the um, the uh, data antenna, which is uh, the reason why you make your phone calls. Your phone calls are clear and you can talk to people, like, no problems. Not with this phone. Now, they do have that capability, okay? They do, but they charge extra, and that's where it gets a little disappointing. And not so much the fact that they charge extra for it, because I realize that they're a company that's trying to rely on data over basic cell phone service. But it's the fact that they charge $7.99 for what they call premium calling. That's ridiculous. I can understand a dollar ninety-nine, maybe dollar fifty, maybe ninety-nine cent add-on. But $7.99 just to be able to do basic phone calls that even a track phone can do right out of the box. Like not even a smartphone track phone, but just one of those old, you know, nine dollar flip phone track phones can do that. And I gotta pay $7.99 to use that, that feature on here. Here, I'll show you guys a demo, okay? This is what I mean. So let me call my Google Voice number. Okay, because I'm not on my Wi-Fi, it's going to make the call through the native Samsung dialer app, okay? Now, <laughs> if I pop on Wi-Fi, which, um, see, now I'm on Wi-Fi, and I make that same phone call,
it is a, it is now going to open the Freedom Pop messaging app using VoIP, which is basically its native method of doing it. Wait, this was actually a primo call. Hold on. <laughs> now, this happened to me a few times, so let me try that again one more time. Because it gets so annoying. This is the annoyance I'm talking about. It's like, you make a phone call. There it goes. Now it's going to use VoIP. Okay? That gets annoying. That gets very annoying. Like, you know, when you make a phone call, you want to make a phone call one way. You don't want to be like, okay, I made a phone call. This time it's all good. Oh, wait, let me call that person back and call that person back. And then it routes you through VoIP because it feels like that's the better connection. And then... All of a sudden, your phone call, like, they can't hear you. It's spotty. It cracks up. It breaks in and out. They, you know, you sound like a broken record or a stuttering fool. I mean, that's one thing that's annoying about Freedom Pop, okay? Um, another thing that's annoying about Freedom Pop is the fact that you have to use their messaging app to send text messages and MMS. Like, you, you know, like, with other services, you can option to use a third-party messaging app. Uh, for me, I like using Hangouts as my all-in-one messenger. And I can't even do that from this phone. So it's like I have Hangouts where I use Google Voice and Google Chat and video calling and, and etc. And I got to use the Freedom Pop messaging app to send text messages from this phone number. And that gets pretty annoying. Another thing, which is the final thing I'm going to talk about that's kind of annoying, is how it's programmed. How the phone is, is actually programmed. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, when you have a cell phone, especially a CDMA cell phone, you have two numbers that's programmed into it. One is the, the MDN, which is your actual cell phone number. So like the one that they give you when you activate a phone, that's your MDN. There's a secondary number called the MIN, which is what's used for like roaming calls and et cetera. All right. Those things are programmed into the phone. So then that way the phone can actually make, you know, what's called premium phone calls. That's not so right here. When I go into my settings and stuff like that, it gives me random numbers inside. There's numbers that's like weird as heck. And I'm like, okay, you know, I figured... Um, if I could put the MDN and the MIN in here, it'll definitely help out, especially with setting up text messaging. So then I can use third-party applications for text messages. And that's why you can't use it is because your MDN and MIN is not actually programmed into here. They have, they have, sorry, voice crack. They have, I guess, like a secondary line or whatever that your phone is routed through that they actually program into here. So it's like, it's just this whole weird madness to it. And it's like, wow, you know. So, um, ending out this video, my thoughts about Freedom Pop, basically. Can this phone be a daily driver? Well, of course it can, because it, it, you know, it gets connection through the network. You can, surf, you can surf the internet. Most people don't even really do phone calls nowadays. Everyone likes to text long conversations. So, texting is not going to be a problem. Texting is very good, very fast. Uh, there's no delays or anything like that. MMS comes through just fine. Um, it's the phone call that gets me, and I'm old school, so I would rather call someone and like have a conversation with them than sit there spending 45 minutes texting something that could have been said in 10 minutes. That's just me. But the phone call is really what gets to me. That's like kind of like a bummer, and the fact that you know you can't use um, like you can't make Hangouts your all-in-one messaging app on the device. But besides that, um, internet connection phenomenal i love it and because in my area sprint has better service out here where i live so i have no problems with with data except for where i actually live at like i keep telling people that i must live on some sort of indian burial ground because here my lte drops to one bar it even drops to 3g so that's a big issue but anywhere else i go in the city and it's like full bars fast i can stream video to you peak like nothing it's clear no problem so um but yeah it works very, very, very well. Um, I really dig this phone, and there's a reason why I'm planning, to, you know, to keep the service. I'm not actually going to pay the $19.99 for one gig of data because that's kind of ridiculous. But like I said, this is a burner phone for me. This is a backup phone, so it's actually going to go on their basic 500 plan, which is free. It costs you no money a month for that plan, and it gives you 500 talk minutes, 500 text, and 200 megabytes of data. So why not? And I paid zero dollars, and I will always have an activated phone. Um, so that's the plan I'm going to go to after this is all said and done and whatnot. So uh, if you guys enjoyed my review of the Galaxy Core Prime and Freedom Pop, you guys can let me know by leaving me that thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Click that subscribe button. It's that way on the mobile app. My name is Tito with Aloha Android, and you guys will see me in the next one. Bye.